All right, let's bring on Anthony Murphy from Bucks on Deck. Anthony, good what's morning. going on? Good morning. Good. Doing good. Doing good. Yeah, thanks for thanks for hopping on here. Um, I know we talked about you know prospects that that the Pirates can can possibly trade, and um, you know there's there's a few reasons why we talk prospects. Right, is one you know they can help you out down the road, but also they're it's it's capital that you've got yeah. to to go out there and acquire talent to to improve your major league team so so let's talk about some guys who 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 had some some big weeks um i don't know if we're going to mention mcadoo again but holy crap um that dude's on fire uh, i don't I know, know if he's one just, of your i mean we could just insert a, a mini mcadoo segment yeah, now here yeah, at, this, at this point and not even count it but yeah right um I don't think there's any. I don't think you could have asked for like a better start to play being in Double A than than what he had uh, over the weekend. So, yeah, like I think when it just comes to bats, right? You're just kind of searching for anyone and anybody to hold on to because the system is just barren uh, mm-hmm. with with bats. So it was really cool to see them, you know, be aggressive with him, promote him to Double A Altoona, and then he goes out there in his first two games in Double A. And it's two homers in, in his first two, two games, right? Two home runs. He had a double, drew a walk. He made this really, really fantastic play at third base, almost Cabrian Hayes esque kind of play. So um, yeah, um, I don't think you can really ask for much of a better start to a double A career than 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 what he had here. Um, it was kind of a light week. Uh, I, I, maybe not light. In terms of hitting, I mean, I guess that's probably expected with, with how the system is. But um, I think uh, Lonnie White. It's been a it's been a rough season for Lonnie. Um, strikeouts has kind of been that. It has been way up and stuff like that. But had a pretty solid week this this past week. Uh, only struck out three times. Actually walked more than he struck out. Um, so that's that's a good sign. One thing I've noticed from him too. I don't know if it's because of like because he did miss a little bit of time to an injury. So I don't know if there's anything like nagging and stuff like that. And then, you know, also the fact that he wasn't getting on base much, but we haven't seen like as many stolen bases from him this year. And, and he was a guy going into the year that I thought if he stayed healthy, he could push like the 2020 envelope, just yeah. because, you know, one on top of playing in Greensboro too. He has a lot of raw power. He stole three bases last week, had uh, out of four attempts. So it was good to see him get a little bit active on, on the base bases. Um, he had a lot of good at bats last week, and it was, it was really encouraging to 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 see see that from him. S- s- you know, still still a couple of swing and misses here, but he he fought off some really tough pitches. He um, laid off a couple. And it, it was just a lot of in, little encouraging stuff that you kind of want to see that maybe 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 he's starting to see the ball a lot better and can start turning things around at this point. Yeah, I'll I'll say this with uh, yeah he he he's had some injuries this year. He's only played fifty games. Mm-hmm. The encouraging thing is the power. I feel like has has kind of started clicking for him a bit, mm-hmm. um, and and it did last year too in his limited playing time. But you know, ten homers in fifty games that's a pretty it's a pretty good clip. Now it is Greensboro, so you don't really know like how many of those you really want to. But but. In green, if you're playing in Greensboro, you, you need to be hitting homers, and he's doing that. So yeah, that's good to see. And yeah, you mentioned the the speed, uh, three stolen bases last week. He's stolen eight of nine uh, attempts mm-hmm. so far on the year. So I mean, he's kind of if you if you kind of take that over a full season, that's that is a 2020 guy, yeah. really at the, at yeah. this at this rate. So yeah, it's good to see him get going um, because again, you're looking for any sort of bat that you can cling to um yeah some multi-hit games last week yeah good good stuff and he, it kind of looks like it kind of started last sunday too he had a three-hit game on sunday uh, and it kind of just carried over into the into the full week yeah and, and we're like uh, nolan and i were talking about it too it's like we're kind of lo- like looking and and it's kind of gotten to the point there it's like we still feel like obviously there's still some risk and, and there's a lot of upside there, but like, we're, we're wondering too, like if there's probably always going to be some swing, swing and miss to his game and like kind of to, in a, in a sense, what maybe everyone was hoping for from Jack Sawinski when he came up, maybe that's maybe, maybe like Lonnie White's going to be like a 220 hitter, but like maybe he's also a guy who's going to push 20 home runs a year 
And then he can also play like elite defense because he's a really good center fielder out there because of the speed and he has a really strong arm. So strikeouts are probably always going to be part of his game, it kind of feels like. But if he can get it just under control enough, like you're you're like even even someone who's like a fourth outfielder with some power off the bench and plays really good defense. But yeah, so. I, I mean, they need they need somebody. They especially need outfielders because that's the yeah. position where I feel like it's just completely barren um, yeah. kind of throughout the organization. So the fact that we're seeing McAdoo do well um, and, and you know, Lonnie White Jr. is kind of that that next guy behind him, I think, <clears throat> you know, if, if you're kind of ranking all the outfield prospects right now. Um, yeah, having him turn it on here the second half could be could be huge um greensboro won the first half championship right they did they did so they they locked themselves into to a, a playoff spot and um i guess i guess it turns out like uh, we were joking about it on the site that the 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 pirates were waiting until they locked it up to to start promoting everybody and basically the next day after the first half ends mcadoo's in altoona so, so yeah i, guess I was they were trying to lock up the championship there so I kind of I always think it's funny when when the way the minor leagues do that, and it's not every does every league do that. It's not every league. It's just like a certain well, select every, yeah, league, right? Yeah, it's like the first half, second half thing. I think everyone runs through. It's, like it's high A and low A were the only ones who like cut off in the middle of the week, kind of thing. So like okay, like Tuesday starts the second half for double A and triple A. So, okay. Yeah. I just always thought it was interesting when teams did that because it's it's it was weird because a lot of times you you like your first half champion, you know, you make the playoffs and then the second half, like the, the team that's in the playoffs is nowhere near the team that that, you know, yeah. made the playoffs. Right. So it's yeah. I always found that kind of interesting because a lot of the guys. Yeah. From if you're going to win the first half championship, probably means you had some guys performing and they're all up to the next level by the time those playoffs roll around. So. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we'll see who's in Greensboro for that. But Greensboro just clinched the playoffs for uh, the South Atlantic League, which is which is pretty fun. So, OK, so Lonnie White, good week. Um, who else we got on the offensive side of things? So, this, I mean, there's a I say it wasn't too much. I, I, I would throw out like a, Tamar did hit two home runs last week, but he did like strike out eight times. So that was still it's still working on some things with it there. Um, but uh, Piner Delgado had another good, good week down in Bradenton. Um, couple walks he had a double batted over 300 um on base right at 400 for the week he, he, he's he's been a really interesting guy I mean, you know i was there the first his first week in the system and and he he hit a lot of balls hard and then it kind of stopped hitting the balls hard but we actually got to see like the speed and that was kind of like the main asset one of the main reasons why the pirates like targeted him and he's just and like you see he's not a very tall guy he's not a big guy he's, he's like five seven and you don't expect that kind of power and then you see him playing shortstop and you kind of assume that okay well he's probably just destined for second base you know because he's not a big guy but he he had like there's a there's a lot of things to where like when you walk into it and you kind of assume with the profile and then some of the stuff we've heard too it's kind of been surprised surprising because he has a lot better of an arm than you kind of figured he He's shown pretty good range. He's shown – he's played fairly well at shortstop. Like, I think I mentioned it last week. I, I still don't think long-term that that uh, he's, he's still probably a second baseman, but I think he can push the envelope a lot further than maybe a lot of people originally expected, which yeah. adds a little extra value to, to him down the road if he can just swing over at shortstop here and there and stuff like that. But he – Losing JT Brubaker, especially like, you know, you never know about pitching and, and stuff like that. And I still think that he could be like a very solid back end piece. But if you're going to give up Brubaker, like this seems like a really, really good get in the system, especially one that's really mm-hmm. struggling for hitting right now. Yeah, I, I remember when, when we traded Brubaker, I was assuming that the talent coming back was going to be someone pretty legitimate. Like, yeah. You don't just trade Brubaker for nobody. Like there, he's a valuable major league pitcher, right? When when healthy, uh, so it sounds like the Pirates got someone pretty interesting. And, and Fangraphs released their P- 
Pirates prospect rankings um, last week, finally, here in, ju- on, yeah. in June. Yeah. But uh, I, I think they had Kiner higher than, than any other outlet out there. Um, yeah, they, they, put him, they put him 10th on the Pirates mm-hmm. prospect rankings, which, uh, which was a little surprising to me. But you look at him right now, he's doing everything you want to see from, from him. He's, he's young. Uh, he's, he's got, he's got the hit tool. He's got the speed. You mentioned the fielding switch hitter. I said the profile is a little, it, it's not normal, right? Five, seven, one forty-five is what he's listed at right now. Um, you don't see too many major leaguers with that type of, yeah. uh, of a profile, but it does happen. Like they, there, there are guys on occasion who can come up and, and do things at, at that, at that size. So yeah, someone definitely to follow and, yeah, the speed power combo. I feel like he's thirty eight games already in Bradenton. I feel like we just got him the other the other day. Yeah. So yeah. um he's he's getting a little bit of a, a sample size under his belt now. Yeah. And I think the biggest thing with him too is like uh there's some struggle with like seeing like the more advanced off speed and like some breaking pitches and stuff like that. And he's starting to show an adjustment with that as of late too. So there's not as much swing and miss going on and stuff like that. So he's, he's doing a good job of identifying it better and, and adjusting to it, which is always like the, the first big step whenever you get to like full season ball. At, at, at yeah. This point. Cool. Yeah. No, I mean, great, great stuff out of him so far. Um, I, I would imagine he probably gets the full year in Bradenton, probably. you know, yeah. would, would be my guess, you know, especially at his age. So, okay. Um, let's move over to the pitching side. There, there were some good pitching performances this week too. Very good, very good pitching set. Uh, very, um, I guess we got to start with uh, Bubba Chandler. Uh, Let's do it. Only pitched yep. once, but I mean, I think I mentioned the other, the other week, like one of those games was it maybe wasn't the best that I've seen, but it was very close. This might have been the best I've I've seen him at at, at this point. What is it? He gave up a leadoff double, and then he retired the next sixteen people he faced. The first seven were by strikeout, so he struck out like I think it was like six or seven in a row. Like he was just. He, he was just throwing darts. Upper 90s, uh, only one walk. Uh, since he's come, be- come back from that injured uh, list stint, in 22 and two-thirds innings, he only has three walks and 27 strikeouts. So the walks, way down. Strikeouts, way up. At, it's just, he, I mean, you guys were talking about trades and stuff like that. If you're going to move a Bubba Chandler, like that, the guy you get, it better be the fix because he he has the chance to be every bit as as good as as Jones and Skeens. I, I think I think easily Bubba ha- Bubba has Bubba has more upside than Jared Jones still. I, I believe, and we've seen what Jared Jones has done in in the majors right now. I, yeah. I, I still believe there's more more there from Bubba that you can get than than Jones. So I think, and, and he showed it the other day. Yeah, I think if you're if you're talking Bubba Jones, uh, Bubba Chan, Bubba Jones, Bubba Chandler has like that <laughs> that prototypical workhorse type, you know, pitching frame too, where like mm-hmm. you could be like, you know, this dude, this dude's someone who can go out there and throw you 200 innings, right? Yeah. Uh, but whereas Jared Jones, you, you don't really get that feel out of him. Yeah, he's been he's been really good. He he had a, a rough outing two weeks ago, but since coming back from that injury, you know, three out of his five starts, he hasn't given up a run. Uh, you mentioned the walks way down because before that, he was walking five, three, two, 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 two. Um, he hasn't walked more than one batter in a start since coming off that that injured list. Uh, and the strikeouts yep. just keep going up. The innings keep going up. Seven innings. That's his longest outing of the year. Um, Seven scoreless, two hits, ten strikeouts. Like it gets a good, against like, against Bowie. Yeah. yeah, like that's, that's, it, that's it wasn't team. like he was. Yeah, it's not like he was out there facing a a, a, a terrible double A team too. Like he's facing a very highly talented um, yeah. a team. So, yeah, outstanding performance from him. You mentioned it. If he's, I don't think anybody in this organization is untouchable. You know, like if if Bubba Chandler. If the if the talent coming back is right, then I'm comfortable dealing Bubba Chandler. I really like Bubba Chandler. So again, it would have to be like you mentioned, like the guy coming back would have to be like, okay, this guy is this, this guy this is an, this is an impactful player. Um, yeah. and, and I can really only think of like one guy that 
that I would probably include. That, that's you know, available. There's not many. Yeah, there's not many okay. people that's going to be available that I feel like okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna offer up Bubba Chandler here. I don't yeah. think there's that many guys out there right now that's going to be available. Yeah, like I think Luis Roberts probably the list. Like that, that could be the list. I, I'm just like I, I was looking at it, looking at his thing. Like I, I try not to do. You know, like, I'm the prospect guy, so I'm just going to stick to my little corner. But yeah. like. Yeah, he yeah he he's coming back from being injured this year, so maybe the struggles are a little bit there. He's getting, but then also too, like there's injury history there too with it. There is, and, and it kind of feels like he's one of those boomer bust kind of profiles too. Like he's like if he comes over here and they don't stick on the right adjustments and stuff like that, that strikeout rate just balloons and it just stays that way. So, yeah, there you go. Comment here from Steel City DW. I will henceforth refer to him by his full name, His Royal Highness Roy Ruben Bubba Chandler. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, no, you're right. I, I like Luis Robert. There's definitely like the the injury issue is mm-hmm. his his main flaw there. So you've got to you've got to kind of deal with that. But um, but yeah, when he's on the field, he's he's, he's an impactful bat, right? Yeah. All right, let's uh one more. Who else? Who else we got? Pitcher, one one or um, one more guy. Talk about had like career days. Patrick Riley had a pretty good week. Mm-hmm. He uh, pitched twice. The first game, I, I believe he threw six innings and struck out ten as well in his first game during the week. Um, gave up a couple home runs. Gave up the game on Sunday. He gave up like it was a very Greensboro esque home run. It, it 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 sounded like it got. It looked like it got launched super high in the air and most ballparks, it probably is just a fly out and then it ends up over the fence. And that's how I gave up like two of the three runs, but um, th- 15 strikeouts and nine and two thirds last week, um, only three walks. So that, or that's, that's the big thing with him. Uh, he's kind of struggled with the walks it, here and there. That was his big thing at Vanderbilt. That's why he never kind of established himself as like a full-time starter there. He's kind of more like a swing man there. Yeah. Um, but has 79 strikeouts and 16 and a third innings this this year. The fastball does, doesn't get it as up there as like Chandler and Jones and 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 all that stuff. It still feels like there's more in the tank there because he's he's learning how to start right now. So yeah. like maybe he, he's kind of extending himself out. But like the Fangraphs report said he was like 92 to 95, like topping 97 though with it. So and then but like the the whiff rate is at like 35, percent which is insane for a fastball. So he's getting plenty of swing and miss with it. There's plenty of life on it. The the sliders have been working really good. Um, just, you know, the Pirates, the, there's a lot of talk with, you know, obviously Paul Skeens was like the obvious pick at the, at the top. But then, like, there's a lot of questions with how they managed the draft after that, especially on the pitching side. They took a lot of guys to where first glance at their, their numbers weren't overly pretty. And, and like, Riley was one of, one of them. Um, but they saw the stuff. They they thought they could do some if they tinkered with some of the mechanics and and stuff like that. And like from from the guys I've talked to, it, it, in this like some of the players and stuff like that, it's you can sense a trend with the Pirates. Like they they want guys who can throw fastballs in the zone, up in the zone, that that had the movement when it gets up in the zone, and just to help tunnel all the other pitches like at, at the bottom of the zone. And like mm-hmm. Riley probably. You can see why he, he's like the exact player that you probably want that you expect the Pirates to go after. And I mean, he's probably been one of the better starting pitchers in the in the system right now this year. I, I feel like the num- numbers don't all the numbers don't like translate to that exactly. But like yeah. he's also playing in, in, in Green, Greensboro as well. And he's given up quite a few like Greensboro style home runs. So He'll be a guy that, like, if you're pumping out, like, mid to upper 90s with your fastball that has plus life to it, that should – you'll have success pretty much at every level that you go to. So, right. he, he's someone that I I don't – I don't know, like, overall pitching-wise if he's ready for double A, but I would like to see how much the home runs come down if pitching somewhere like that. So Yeah. Um, yeah, you, you mentioned last year's draft, and, and it was – they they got a lot of guys who, yeah. At first glance, you're like, why are we drafting all these relievers? <laughs> you know, and and Riley, you mentioned him. Mean, he he went to Vanderbilt, struggled to kind of stay in that rotation. Like he made some starts, but he was used out of the bullpen quite a bit. 
Um, Pirates, you know, obviously making him a starter. He he really caught my eye in that in that um, that prospects game in spring training. Like you could tell, I was like, okay, there's there's something here. Like this stuff's pretty good. Uh, oh. It because I think he came in like right after Ashcraft or Chan. Like he 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 came in kind of right after like someone who like you really wanted to see. Well, no. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And it was like, hmm, like there's not really a drop off here with Patrick Riley. Yeah. Like he looks, he looks pretty good. So yeah, it's good to see him having a good year in Greensboro, which like you mentioned, like the home runs have been an issue for him, but outside that, like he's been really good. The walks obviously being the main concern. Yeah. So I think that's where, okay, if you can't find that command at some point, I I think like Patrick Riley's to me looks like a guy where like, if, if he can become a starter, cool. But like he's looking like he's looking like an arm who can help you at the major league level in some sort of capacity. Yeah, yeah. I still think he's probably a reliever. Like I'm not ready to like shift over to to him being a starter yet. I I do like that they are trying him as a starter. I don't think there's any harm in that. He did yeah. hit. Um, it, like I think I don't know whether like the radar gun in Bradenton like rounded up for it, but it, I did. I do believe he. Hit, it showed up as triple digits a couple times for him last year. Um, so there's the, the velocity can definitely get up there. It once if they do make the, the shift back to the bullpen and then like, you're already looking at the plus. So like he, he's potentially like a, an elite back arm, back of the rotate or back of the bullpen type of arm mm-hmm. in like a worst case scenario. So yeah. best yeah. case, like you're looking at like a, back of the rotation starter that can rack up strikeouts kind of thing. So yeah. maybe the ER, maybe he's always susceptible to the home run ball kind of thing, no matter where he goes. And that, that could just be the, you know, throwing upper nineties and up in the zone. Sometimes one's just going to get caught and shoved out of the ballpark kind of thing. Um, but still someone who's going to strike no matter, no matter where he's at, he's probably going to strike out a lot of hitters. And yeah. Cool. Can't argue with that. Yeah, no, good stuff. Good stuff as always. Murphy, thanks for hopping on here. I'm going to put you on the spot. The 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 whole uh the whole uh premise of the show was, you know, how do you fix the Pirates offense? So my question to you. Mm-hmm. Who's the who's the best Pirates prospect who ends up being in another organization come July 31st? Who who's who's going to be? You you know who <laughs> you know um so I was just thinking about this listening to the show and and probably you know who probably the best trade chip right now is if you guys feel very comfortable with the rotation right now, you're because like the, the obvious trade, the obvious trade partner is probably like the, if you think about like who has, we have really good pitching prospects and then you're looking for someone who has some really good hitting prospects. The obvious answer is all obviously the Baltimore Orioles. They have a ton of hitting prospects, not much on the pitching side. The only thing that I see with that is they're going to want they're trying to win now. They won 100 mm-hmm. games last year. They want to win now. Even trading for, even trying to get someone for Bubba Chandler pro- doesn't really do anything for them right now. So yeah. if they're going to move like a Kobe Mayo or any of those guys, they're going to want someone who can help their rotation now. Yep. And if you're looking at that kind of stuff, I, I kind of feel like maybe someone like Braxton Ashcraft is a guy that can, gives you a nice mix of, Hey, he could probably help us now. Mm-hmm. And then also he can still probably be a pretty solid guy down, down, down the road. Yeah. I, I think, I think like you guys were talking about like, who's going to start on Wednesday. I mean, that, that pretty much, that pretty much lines up when Ashcraft's next start should be. So I don't know if you want to throw him out there in Cincinnati for his first ever start, but I I'd mean, be, I'd be all for it. I'd be all for it. I, I, I don't that red lineup sucks, should... by the way. <laughs> yeah. I, I I don't think there's there's zero reason that he should pitch another game for the Indianapolis Indians right now. Once they start getting healthy back, like I feel like you could probably s- throw Martin Perez or even Marco Gonzalez, th- toss one of them in the bullpen. Yeah, w- when when they're all healthy, throw Ashcraft there. Have Ashcraft come up as like a six starter every now and again to try, you know, cause like I said, Jerry Jones is already at 86 innings this year. Don't know how much further, like you can, to, instead of doing a bullpen game to extend him out, you could bring Ashcraft up to be 
spot start, send them back down. Yep. But maybe maybe if the right the right trade trade is there. Um, I mean, Ashcraft kind of seems like a pretty intriguing piece for for another team that gives you a nice blend of because like like even the White Sox, if you're gonna empty the empty your you're gonna need some guys to to fill out innings and he can fill out some innings towards the end of the year and then he can be someone that can be part of your future rotation as well. That's true. I could see him being very attractive to a team who is rebuilding. Yeah. You know, like he yeah. like someone who hey, he's someone we can slot into a rotation right now, but then he can also be a starting pitcher for us for the next six years. So yeah, yeah that's that's an interesting trade piece. I I I, I like Braxton Ashcraft a lot. But yeah, if you do feel really comfortable about your one, two, three, it's pretty easy to go out there and fill out a back end of a rotation, you know, at any given time. Um, you know, obviously the more home run talent you have, the better because you can spend that money out elsewhere. But yeah, um, he's he's certainly someone who um, other teams would covet. That's for sure. And he's also a Neil Huntington guy. So like does Ben Charrington maybe not have as much like allegiance to him because he, he wasn't he's not a, he's not a Charrington guy. So yeah, it's all I think that's sometimes in play, too. OK, cool. Well, hey, appreciate you coming on here. Um, we're going to we're going to hop off. But thanks for everybody for listening. Thank you all for watching. Thanks for waking up this morning and and making the chat lively. Um, we'll uh, we'll have our post game show tomorrow. And uh, yeah, like the video, subscribe to the page, all that good stuff. Uh, but yeah, outside that, Murphy, you can find him on Twitter uh, underscore Murphy eighty eight. Is that right? Yep. Underscore Murphy eighty eight. Um, and then also the Bucks on deck Substack. If you love prospect talk, make sure you're subscribed to that. Um, they really cover the entire organization top to bottom, do it extremely well. Uh, so make sure that you check that out. And Murphy has a podcast with uh, with Nola comes out on Tuesdays or it's just prospect talk. Um, it's, it's really good and goes into a lot of detail on the system. So, yeah, check all that out. I appreciate it. All right. Well, guys, thanks for watching. We'll talk to you later.